It's time. Crisis wasn't quite sure how long he'd been sat with the eggs, waiting for Alex Strauss's return. Felt like about two weeks, probably. I'm ready. So the Dragon Mage and the Queen of Life made their way through a bunch of passages, until finally they arrived at an opening, overlooking a vast, cloudy region. And it was in this moment that Crisis suddenly realised the air up here was actually quite thin, so he went all wobbly. Perhaps this might not be the best thing for you. But Crisis then felt a sudden renewed strength course through him, because Coriel Strauss then approached. I trust I'm not too late. You are not. Do you feel up to the journey? Until this very moment, I thought perhaps I could not, but it seems I'm feeling better again. Coriel Strauss's gaze flickered towards Crisis for a moment, as if he was starting to notice a bit of a pattern, but he said nothing. The Dragon Queen then ushered Crisis to jump on Coriel Strauss's back, which would have been weird if the direct contact with his past self didn't make him feel even stronger, so he was quite happy to do so. Are you settled? I am. And so, off they all buggered, taking flight and soaring through the skies at astonishing speed, dipping and barrel rolling and all sorts of things. Not once did they have to land and recharge their vigour. Ten paragraphs of flying, to be precise. But eventually, they arrived at a monumental cavern. But inside said cavern, Crisis was surprised to see an absolutely flawless chamber. No stalactites or stalagmites, no fissures, not even a crack. And despite his bonk memory, Crisis recalled that this was the Chamber of the Aspects. But the mage could also see that it was quite clearly empty. None of the other aspects were here. Something his younger self had obviously picked up on as well. You spoke to them all? Only Asira. She said she'd contact the others. And I did what I could. An emerald form then appeared out of thin air, albeit not fully solidifying and surrounded by a slightly dreamy haze. I'm pleased that you've come so swiftly, good Asira. I come because you are my sister, my friend. I come because you would not request a gathering if you did not have good reason. And the others? Nos Dormu is the only one I could not reach directly. You know his ways. I was forced to contact one who serves him. They said they'd do what they could to let their master know. That's all I could do, I'm afraid. Alex Straza nodded, barely hiding her disappointment. Then even if the others attend, we cannot come to a final decision. Crisis was doubly concerned for Nosdormu's radio silence. To be perfectly honest, the Timeless One was likely the only aspect that would actually be able to help him. It was looking more and more like the other option, the one where Ronin and Crisis were eliminated, was going to be the thing. A couple of random fireworks then went off above everyone's heads, as a huge blue shape took form. Another dragon, with an extremely merry expression on his face. Welcome, Malagos. Such a pleasure to see you, Queen of Life. You too, my fair dream. Ysira smiled, coyly. How fares your realm? As wondrous as I would wish it. Filled with brightness, filled with colours, filled with young. Are you not well? I'm fine. Just... Crasus was quite thankful that Coriel Strauss could not see his face. Seeing Malagos had just made him feel extremely uncomfortable. Every fibre of his being wanted to tell the blue aspect about the future about his fate. And this? Is this the one to whom we owe this gathering? It is. Malagos then sniffed the air. He has the scent of us upon him, and I do detect old magic surrounding him. Is he bespelled? We should let him tell his own story, once the others have arrived. Well, that was nice of Alex Straza, to spare Crasis an interrogation. One more arrives now. The ceiling rippled, shimmered, and then a huge winged form phased through it. Black as the night sky, radiating the power of the world itself. You called and I have come. It's always good to see my friend Alex Straza, and I welcome your presence, dear Naltharian. Seeing Malagos had made Crisis uncomfortable, but now he was physically shaking. I was surprised when Asira not you contacted me. You are well, Alex Straza. I am. And you, young Coriel Straz? You're not at your best, I think. A passing illness. It's an honour to see you again, Earthwater. Naltharion then lifted his gaze from Coriel Strauss to Krasis. And you, you have a name, Krasis. <laughs> a defiant little one. Seems he is indeed a dragon, as Asira hinted. A dragon with a tale to tell. But I would prefer to give Nosdormu more time before we begin. Give the timeless one more time. <laughs> Both Naltharion and Malagos then shuffled to one side 
deep in conversation for a bit. It's good that Neltharion has Malagos to turn to. He's been quiet with me of late. I sense a distance too. He does not take the action by these night elves with pleasure. He stated once that they have grandiose ideas of becoming like the creators. There may be something to that. Alexstrasza glanced towards Krasis for a moment, which just made the mage feel even more uncomfortable. He was having a real internal crisis now. He just wanted to blurt out everything. Change the future. Save its loves from slavery. His children from needless sacrifice. Malagos from witnessing his own flight be decimated and going batshit crazy. And out of frustration, Krasis then glared at one of the causes of all of those things. Deathwing. However, Notharian's eyes then met his own and seemingly glared back. No, Krasis thought. Had the darkness already descended upon the Earth Warder? Had his pleasant demeanour at this gathering been nothing more than a lie? When had Neltharion turned to betrayal, he wondered, cursing his addled memory? Was it meant to be now? You know me, but I do not know you. The chilling voice filled Krasis's head, and he prayed that someone, anyone, would notice what just happened. But, nope. You would speak against me. You would have the others distrust their comrade of old, their brother. Well, that settled that then. Gracis could quite clearly sense in Neltharion a raging paranoia, an adamant belief that no one but he knew what was good for the world, a belief that anyone that was even the slightest threat was true evil. You will not be allowed to spread any of your malicious falsehoods. He's not coming. Is here his sudden declaration put a pause on that little chat? He may still appear. No, I was just contacted by the one with whom I spoke. They can't find him. The Timeless One is somewhere beyond the mortal plane. Balls, Krasis thought. I agree then. We'll have to go on without the full five. There's no rule where we cannot discuss the matter after the story is told, even if a course of action cannot be taken. Everyone then immediately looked expectantly towards Krasis, so he hopped off his younger self's back. I am one of you. My true name is known to the Queen of Life, but for now, I am simply Krasis. He bellows well, this hatchling. Krasis immediately shot Malagos a stern look. Now is not the time for jokes, especially for you, Guardian of Magic. This is a time when a balance is nigh upset. A terrible mistake, a distortion of reality, threatens everything. How dramatic. You will hear my story. You will hear it and understand. For there is a worse danger on the horizon. One which touches us as well. You see... Fue. Everyone's head sort of side twitched. That was weird. You having a stroke? Um... Uh. Uh. Grace has looked to Alexstrasza for help, but she was now also looking at him as if he'd gone mental. The Major's head then started to spin, and I guess we all know what's happening next. But as his legs buckled and vertigo took hold, Krasis heard the deathly calm voice of Neltharion once again. I did warn you. And then, Krasis passed out. 